Wouldn't it be a bit tricky, like let's say in a place like Singapore, where um, most of the apartments here are, are sort of say, uh, apartments run by or at least been supplied by uh, a state-run agency, which actually does not allow people to rent out rooms unless there are very specific conditions which are met. So that would mean that only a very small proportion of the people here in Singapore would be actually renting out their apartments. Uh, is that a problem? That's true. So 20% of the homes in Singapore are privately owned. Those are the types of homes you see on Airbnb, though. And even within that 20%, there are still many homes. Uh, so I don't see that too much of, as a limiting factor. Um, but you know, I think ultimately we have to think about the real, the real benefit or opportunity here is for the hosts. And this is an opportunity for regular people to earn a supplementary income. And I think that's an opportunity that is just important to those who own private homes in Singapore as it is to those who live in public housing. I mean, those are the middle class or below middle class people uh, who could really benefit from a few extra dollars. Uh, and so we, while we certainly respect uh, why there are different rules for public and private housing, uh, I think there is an opportunity here to help those who are most in need as well. So you're actually putting, making a pitch for why public housing in Singapore ought to allow people to use Airbnb. Well, Singapore is currently undergoing a review process uh, of, of the policies. So that's for them to decide. Um, but I certainly think there is a, a case to be made uh, for why even in public housing, Airbnb could benefit the citizens of Singapore.